guys, welcome to Bastion Time. I am your host, Bastion, and this video is probably going to shock a lot of you. Um, but I, I realized that since I've started this whole story time thing from the point of when I first came out, that there was a crap ton of stuff that I almost swore there, and you can't swear in the first minute in a YouTube video. Anyways, there was a crap ton of stuff that happened way before that that might have been of some interest so i thought i'd go ahead and talk a little bit about some of those things in between story time videos and one of those things is well this carried on for years and years and years actually but it started in middle school and that is that i was a vegetarian um i had been a vegetarian from eighth grade and all the way up through geez five years ago maybe slightly longer actually but um Basically, I met a friend in eighth grade named Audra. I have not kept in contact with her, so I don't think she knows, you know, what a big impact she had had on my life. But anyways, um, she was raised vegetarian, which I have kind of mixed feelings about. Like when she told me some of the stories about like basically never being able to eat meat, she talked about it in the kind of way that I feel like a lot of religious people who were raised in like specific religions talk about that kind of thing where it's like, well, why would I want to, you know? And then she would spew like this dogma at me about vegetarianism. And at the time I was not really affected by that in a way that I thought was negative. Like I didn't think like, oh, poor girl, you know, she's raised with these fundamentalist vegetarian beliefs I was just like huh that's different now that I'm old and cynical I uh I do definitely think that maybe it's not best to raise your children vegetarian but and just kind of let them pick for themselves what it is that they want to do um but in any case I, I at the time I didn't really think about it like that all I thought was wait there's a thing where people don't eat meats and that's just already a thing, well, sign me up because I really can't stand the taste of most meat. And that remains true to this day. I, I really can't. I find it basically disgusting. So for me, it was never an animal rights or a nutrition thing. It was strictly that since as far back as I can remember, when my mom would make things like Swiss steak, I don't even know what that is now, or roast or, really any kind of meat. It was a struggle for me as a kid to eat it. I just did not like the taste of it. Now, I loved my mom dearly, loved past tense. I still love her, but she's she's passed away now. But um, maybe evidence points to the fact that she might not have been the best cook. <laughs> um, she was a great baker, lots of delicious baked goods, but maybe her cooking skills were not such that uh for instance i remember not really liking chicken much as a kid and yet now i love chicken and we will get to to that eventually but maybe some of these other meats i just didn't like the taste of because i didn't like the way she she cooked it but um i just hated meats like i would eat everything on my plate just fine except mushrooms i have always hated and still dislike mushrooms but uh the meat I just could not eat so basically what happened every night is she would set a timer for an hour and if I did not finish my dinner before that hour was up then I would get a spanking and every night because I did not want to eat that meat that was on the plate I would get a spanking um so and that includes fish that includes everything I just could not stand most meat the only meat that I did like when I was a kid was pepperoni on pizza beef jerky, pepperoni sticks, and um, spicy, like, taco-flavored beef. And that was about it. Um, so anyways, when I was in eighth grade in middle school, and I found out that vegetarianism was a thing, I was like, oh, can I be one of those, please? And again, it had nothing to do with animal rights or, or nutrition or anything, even though at this point in time, I was starting to think a little bit about nutrition. I was noticing that all of my older relatives were obese and maybe I wanted to avoid that, but I didn't really have a great concept of nutrition at that point in time. 
Um, so anyways, I talked to my mom about it and surprisingly, she didn't put up much of a fight. All she said is like, look, I'm not gonna make you a completely separate dinner. I'm gonna make the dinner. If you don't wanna eat the meat that's in that dinner, I'm not making you any kind of substitute or anything. And because I had a terrible concept of proper nutrition at that point in time, I was like, that sounds fine to me. I'll just eat the mashed potatoes and the, you know, cheese sandwiches or whatever. Like I, I don't need any meat substitute anyway. It worked out just fine, surprisingly. I thought she would put up much more of a fight, um, but she didn't and, and that was fine with me. Now things got a little trickier once uh, you stop eating meat for a while, then you start taking on some of the other concepts through osmosis. Um, so while it was not originally about animal rights, when I would learn factoids about, you know, basically like pigs being, having brains that are very similar to dogs, um, and cows too have brains that are pretty similar to dogs, then that started sort of seeping into my brain um, a bit. And so while it was never about animal rights, some animal rights stuff did kind of like find their way into my brain a little bit. Um, factoids about things like cows and methane gas and uh, just how much meat is required to, you know, by the American diet, which causes all kinds of issues. But um, in any case, this all stayed the case up until about five years ago when I had uh, been progressing on my bodybuilding, we'll put in air quotes, journey, but then had reached a plateau for several years. And my bodybuilding friend Brendan was like, look, dude, you just need to start eating meat, at least chicken, or else, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. And so I did. And uh, I, once I discovered, once I forced myself to start eating some chicken, I was like, oh my gosh, this stuff is actually really good. What the hell have I been doing for all these years? Um, so now I love chicken and I can't even imagine not eating it. And even eating chicken sometimes when I'll watch a video of like cute little chicks, chicks meaning little chickens, not girls. <laughs> um, it's a little tricky in my brain. And especially like, for instance, last night I watched a video of this guy playing basketball with a cow and I was like oh gosh I forgot they are cute and their brains are very similar to dogs and god knows I could never eat my dog so and pigs uh, just so freaking cute so it is very 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 tricky for me to convince myself to eat any other types of meat I will occasionally have beef jerky but that's mostly because it's so completely different from from like eating a juicy steak or a hamburger or something. I have not been able to get myself to eat a hamburger or anything in these past five years. Definitely no ham, although I did have bacon about six months ago and had a little, a little mini minuscule breakdown afterwards. Hi Sky. are you saying hi to Sky? Neighbor dog meet up. But anyways, it is very tricky for me to get myself to be comfortable eating other meat, so I basically don't. But it is certainly true that adding chicken to my diet has dramatically helped me. It's not necessarily like that vegetarian protein can't get you jacked. It's mostly that the sheer amount of vegan or vegetarian protein you'd have to consume would be next to impossible to eat all of that to get the same amount of grams of protein that you would from something like chicken. It's about the, the quantity of the item and the density of the protein in that item. If I had a gigantic stomach that could fit enough of the vegetarian or vegan food, uh, then it'd be fine. The density of the protein in the chicken makes it so much easier. So, uh, especially when I do the weird things that I do to it, for instance, cook a chicken breast and then puree it and drink it like soup. <laughs> Stuff like that makes it much easier to get enough protein grams a day to have significant gains. I do regret sometimes abandoning vegetarianism and every once in a while I do think to myself if I were sufficiently wealthy enough 
and had already acquired the physique that I wanted, I could start going back to being a vegetarian probably. And then I would have less uh, mental gymnastics to do um, when I eat chicken. Anyways, that's it for this video. See you guys in the next one. Bye guys.